This video goes through the C source used in the demo program. All source code and header files are included in a zip file. See links in the description. You can input integer and floating point numbers and alphanumeric data. Menus can be created with a selection pointer. This uses an Arduino Nano V3, New Haven Serial SPI LCD, and Born's rotary encoder dial. The push to select switch is timed, so two functions can be performed by using short or long presses. I put a video out there that shows the rotary encoder dial running an LCD display, which is designed to create input for integer numbers, floating point numbers, and alphanumeric strings. So you could use that for an embedded processor application that would not interface well with a keyboard, or a keyboard is too big, or it's just overkill and not needed. This is the program that was written for that demo. So we'll go through this kind of quickly, just to give you an overview to help you understand what was going on here. You'll need the header files here, which are in the zip file, link in the description. You'll also need the lcdbasic.c program, again, in the zip file, link in the description. That has all the LCD functions and some other goodies in there, so you'll need to link that in. So this program starts off here with declaring which pin is going to be used to read the push to select switch. So in this case, it's pin 16. And this macro, it's included in the nano.h header file, simply reads that pin. So you'll have to set this number 16 up to be consistent with the pin you're going to use to read that switch. Later in the program, we'll actually declare that pin as an input pin. So I'll show you that a little bit later. The interrupt service routines kind of evolved. Let's go down just a little bit in the program. There's two sets here. They both trigger from int 0 and int 1. The pragmas are here. The old interrupt service routines have been left in but commented out just for reference. I found that this interrupt service routine set reads each of the four change of states between the detents. And I divide by four to get a single count between the detents. And that's actually the best way to do this. It works much better. And this is a pulse count that is associated with this interrupt service routine set. And it will start at 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, and so forth. So these two variables here went with the old interrupt service routine, so they're commented out. This is your direction flag. And then these variables here simply work with the timer. And I'll go down just a little bit here. And I set up a timer for 100 millisecond increments. And the reason for that is that allows me to track the time between press events. So I can actually create a short press and a long press and distinguish between those two situations and use that push to select button for two different functions. So that's kind of handy. Here's a set of functions. Basically, the alphanumeric input is here. The level bar function is here. The numeric input integer floating point is here. The variables that come off the encoder, the count, and the push to select switch, those are presented here. It's kind of a test routine. And this reads the switch, blocking, non-blocking, and takes care of figuring out the time between when you push it to close it, when you release it. This user select is the menu. There are four menu items on the display, and this is simply the routine that displays those four menu items and allows the arrow to move between them and select one from the menu. This user accept is the prompt that you see pop up that gives you the edit and yes and quit as answers to the go question. So that's where that comes from. So that's kind of all that's in here. This init is the Arduino core library init. I put the source code in there in case anybody wanted to see what that function does. And if you're going to use it, you'll have to change the name to init1 so you don't get a redefines error when you try to link this. So you can do that. But I just left the prototype in here in case you're going to do that. Here's the main program. It's pretty simple. 
This is the string variable which is maxed out at the width of the LCD which is 20 characters plus one for a null delimiter in that string. This is the integer used in the input routine and this is the floating point used in the input routine for the two numbers. So that's that. Um, the in routine, the default in routine actually turns on global interrupts but I've included these functions in here in case you wanted to do those manually. These are important macros, very important, and they're application specific. In my application, pin 16 was used to read the switch, and I've declared it here as a digital input. That's all that's required. These are the three signals required by the LCD, slave select, master out, slave in, and serial clock, and they're set up here. And this is the programming of the timer. That's all set up here. So coming down a little further, the newest interrupt service routine needs to do a trigger on a level change. So that's what you're seeing here. These two macros simply program the interrupts 0 and 1 to trigger on a change. This is from the old interrupt service routine, and they're commented out, again, left in for reference. And these two macros simply enable those two interrupts, int 0 and int, and int 1, so it can read the switch. The LCD requires a little delay, so we come in here, we do that, 100 milliseconds, turn off the cursors, and then do a backlight to the default of 8, which is maximum brightness, and the contrast setting 40, which is actually sort of the best display I've found. This runs from 0 to 50. A lot of those values are just not usable. Then we clear the LCD right here. So this is the main program. It's all there is to it. There are four things that are selectable here. This displays the menu, comes back with one, two, three, or four. And these are each of those menu items, pretty self-explanatory. And the rest of the program deals with the nuts and bolts of reading the switch, and then this is your level bar. All this is pretty well commented. And then these routines are a little tricky. They're well commented. And this number input, I'll just go through this briefly. The row in the column where you want to display the number is here. And this gives you the opportunity to change where the row and column is for the prompt, the accept prompt. And that would be edit, yes, and quit. There's not a lot of room on that display. So where I've set this up is kind of OK. I'm not sure you can move it around much. But on a larger display, you could. This is the address of the number that will be sent back or sent in to the routine for integers. And same thing here for floating point. This is the total number of digits in the number. And if it's an integer number, the decimal positions will be 0. So you can set this up if you've got an, an x point xx, this would be 2, an x point xxx, this would be 3, and then your digit count would be 4. This does not include the plus and minus sign, and it does not include the decimal point. It's just the digits. So that's that routine. It's a little tricky with the logic, but here it is. Uh, this one takes care of the alphanumeric input and basically you just pass a string in and it will display that string. It's got to be a null terminated string and it will allow you to pick characters. It's shown in the demo how it works. It's pretty easy and this routine again is it's kind of tricky. There's a lot to it here but there's comments in here for you to study. This is the user accept. It just presents a question, go, and gives the user the opportunity to select edit, yes, or quit by turning the dial and then pushing to select. And this is the display for the LCD variables, which just simply display the count and the select, uh, one or zero when you push the button, and of course the direction of the encoder. So that's the entire program. and. This is the menu here, the four items on the menu, alphanumeric, level bar, 
number input and encoder variables. That's all that there is to this. So that's kind of the end of the program. This will produce a hex file that's about 10.4K in size, just to give you a rough idea. So that's in there. So hopefully this is useful and you can study it and or use it in your own applications. And thanks for watching. And that's it.